love you guys to the tenth grade because we have one going on in twins right now. Mornings and MIs. Um, as you know, it will be social as a language, and our peerless director of marketing, Eric Colcrane, will be presenting to you guys today. So let's give him a big warm welcome and thank you again for being here. All right, good morning, guys. Uh, we re kind of organized this. If you've been to a couple of them, we normally would do them over here. Uh, wanted to change this and wanted to bring in cereal. So if you had cereal this morning, please raise your hand. You eight people, thank you. The rest of you need to some cereal. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk for 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll do question and answer if you guys have questions about anything that you're doing in the social space. Um, I have nothing but time this morning, so as long as you would like to stay, I'm good to stay here today. Um, so before I started this talk, I went back and I read a book. Uh, the book was called The Clue Train Manifesto, and it came out in 2000. And I reread it because back when that came out, it had a profound effect on me in the way that I viewed the internet. Um, and it did that because it took ideas from media ecologist Marshall McLuhan, who wrote about this idea in the 60s of this global village, and that global village would turn out to be the internet. It also uh, jumped off on ideas that Seth Godin would write about in permission marketing, the idea that your marketing shouldn't scream at the customer because they're tired of being screamed at. Instead, you should welcome your customer into your brand and tell them a compelling story. So I went back and reread that. And I reread that because 15 years later, there are 50 of us sitting in a room and many of us still think that we can yell at our customers and tell them what we want them to do. And that's just wrong. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna walk through maybe some different ways to talk to the customer. Um, and before we get there though, uh, I wanna talk about the year of 51 BC. So this is the year of Julius Caesar. He's running the entire world, right? And he wants to be able to establish himself in the realm, so he takes uh, his closest friends, at the time they were called statesmen, and he dispatches them, if you love Game of Thrones, he dispatches them across the realm to cover all of the uh, places in Westeros. Um, and one such person was Cicero, and Cicero really loved Rome, like a lot. And so he was far, far away from Rome and wanted to keep in touch. So what he would do is he would write letters to his friends on papyrus and send it to them. They would write notes in the margin and send it back to him. He would write notes in the margin or rewrite another letter and send it back to them. And this would go on and on and on. And this is how you keep up on news. This is how you keep up on family events. And this is how you keep up with what was going on in the world. That might have looked like this. <laughs> so literally the very first social media status update was done by Cicero in the year 51 BC. Why I tell you this story is because Social is in each and every one of us to a level that is absolutely biological. This is when there's only papyrus. There is no paper. If you've ever picked up papyrus, you know how difficult it is to manage and how difficult it is to keep it from breaking into a million pieces. This is before William Pinesdale is convicted of heresy for rewriting the New Testament in English. He was then hung and then burned because you should kill that guy twice. Uh, then, Gutenberg takes that idea and decides to turn it into mass media. So he takes the Bible, he starts the Gutenberg press, and starts sending out mass media, what we know as mass media. Mass media then accelerates again as actual newspapers and magazines show up in the 1800s and into the 1900s. Then we get the electronic age, where we go from movies, to radio, to television, to the internet, to web 2.0, to where we are today which we all call social media. But as you can see here, and I holistically agree, it's just a slang term for what we do on the internet today. What we're not gonna do today, because I have no interest in doing this, is we're not gonna talk how to get more likes on your Facebook page, we're not gonna talk about how you can get more page views, and we're not gonna talk about how you can get more downloads of your internet app or your phone app. Why? All of those things are byproducts of what I actually wanna talk about, which is engagement. Those other three things, if you measure people showing up, but if we just got everyone in a room and never talked to you again, we wouldn't know any of this stuff, what would work and what didn't work. We wouldn't know to move from over here to over here. We wouldn't know that cereal bars might be a cool thing to do. We wouldn't know to change coffee because we want to know the information about what you're doing, where you're going, and why you like what you like. If you're not doing that with your current customers, you're not doing it right. It doesn't matter if you have 500,000 people on your Facebook page, if none of them engage in your brand. And I'm going to prove that here in the next couple minutes. And we'll start with Facebook because it's the largest. 936 million users, 85% of them are doing it on a phone. If any of you have tried to get started 
on Facebook recently, you know that organic is very difficult these days. Um, so let me dispel the rumor. Although Facebook is free to sign up, they don't owe us anything. Okay? What Facebook is trying to do, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, what Facebook is trying to do is learn from MySpace. One of the reasons that MySpace died is because the ad algorithm in MySpace sucked a lot. So what Facebook is trying to do is keep all the garbage out of your newsfeed and only the things that you want. So as marketers, and every single one of us are marketers in here, we need to do better jobs of getting killer content in front of them. And how do we do that? Well, you do that with either doing promoted posts, but what I like better is dark posts, and I'll talk about both of those in a second. Promoted posts are if you pay to float up your posts, uh, or semi-organically or natively. Uh, and dark posts are the idea of, um, well, we'll go back for a second. Dark social is the idea that, uh, this is my friend Drew, so if, if Drew clicks on a link on Facebook, opens that up in the web browser, copies that link, and then emails it to Jamie, that's dark social, because once it's emailed to Jamie, we don't actually know where it's going. So a dark post is when you set up a highly targeted ad that just shows up in somebody's newsfeed, but doesn't show up on your brand page. Because the other thing that customers don't want to do is they don't want to be sold to over and over and over again. They want to be a part of your brand, and they want to enjoy what you're doing as a brand. So I'm only going to show, over the course of the next 20 minutes, I'm only going to show one bad example, because I want to prove to you that Facebook likes are a meaningless, meaningless metric. And here's how I'm going to do it. This is Noodles and Company. This is a post from last week. They have over a half a million likes. How many likes did that get? 29 likes. Half a million people, 29 likes. So, when I'm talking about engagement and I'm talking about killer content, this is not it. And here's why. Number one, it's a terrible, terrible week. Running in a big race this weekend, check out this article for inspiration. Oh, and make sure we do a terrible job of selling. Don't forget to stop by for noodles after. Instead, what this brand should have done, how many of you have been to BuzzFeed in the last 24 hours? Come on, really? Every one of your hands should go up. What they should have done is something that BuzzFeed would have done. What would BuzzFeed have done? Seven reasons that carbo loading makes you do better in racing goes back to the Noodles website, they read that piece of content about why they should carbo load before they race, and then what does Noodles do? Well, they pixel that piece of content, and then they serve you an ad or a coupon or whatever after that race. That's what they should do. And when we're talking about other ways to get engaged, is you've got to be in the moment. And one of my favorite things from last week as well, um, this is Coca-Cola, using one of my favorite things on Facebook right now, which is their native video. And if you haven't used their native video, you should certainly play with it, because the Facebook algorithm loves the video. So even before you promote a post or you put up a dark post, try some native video. So it won't play on here, but you get the sense. What they did is they turned all of their products into dinosaurs for Jurassic World, and it was a video that would roll on and on and on and on. So it captured the moment of Jurassic World, which would come out to be the largest film of all time, somehow. Um, so I guess a brand new tip for tonight is if you, or this morning, is if you can get Chris, Chris Pratt to do something for you, you should do that. Um, so this is a great example of what you should do when you're doing social. Not so much this for a number of reasons. You didn't curate it. I mean, you didn't create it, you curated it when you should have created it. The tag is terrible um, and clearly nobody cares. Because if I was sitting in a meeting with a sales department and they took, and I hired this company to put this up and this is what they got and that's how many people I had, I would be curious. So when you're dealing with Facebook, one, it's pay to play these days, so have a strategy behind that. And two, put killer content out. And three, the other thing that we're gonna talk about here today is don't try and port all of this, this stuff to other platforms. Don't, don't, don't put this on Twitter. That's not how it works. It's the other reason we're here today. All of these platforms are different. You gotta talk in a different way. Uh, you gotta maybe put a different piece of content talking about Jurassic World and Coke onto Twitter. Because if the idea is to get as many people as possible sampling your brand, they're not gonna sample your brand if the same content is on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and LinkedIn. They're gonna sample all five of those if there's different content in all different platforms. Speaking of Twitter, now they've got some problems in their CEO universe, uh, and they've got some problems with the way that the service works. That said, it's over 300 million users. There's 500 million tweets per day, which is a problem. 80% of that is happening on a mobile device, but this is a problem because this is a fire hose. And if you're in marketing, it's really hard to get attention. So what do you do to get attention on Twitter? There's a couple things they've got. We're doing one of them right now. 
We're playing around with Periscope, um, which in 2015, if your brand isn't playing with some sort of video, Meerkat, Periscope, Facebook native videos, Vimeo, Vine, any number of those, you should change that today and start playing with video. The other thing you can do is start engaging with your customer. And Twitter on its uh, app on a desktop has a search function. It's got a search function on the mobile. It's just not as awesome or easy to use. So what I would do is search for whatever it is that you sell. Uh, I happen to know what you do for a living, so you do murder mysteries. So I would look for people that are doing dinner parties or restaurants or whatever and find people that are talking about nightlife and have conversations with them and build that organically. Because just putting out content on Twitter is very hard to get recognized. And their platform for ads is not and not nearly as cool as Facebook and soon to be Instagram. So I would play around with search if you haven't played around with search. And I would reach out to people that are reaching out to you. Anybody that tweets at you a brand that you don't respond to, rewind the clock 40 years and pretend it's a phone that you didn't pick up. Anyone who answers or talks to your brand on Twitter that you don't talk to, you're literally not answering the phone in the most literal way possible. So I would do those two things. And the other thing that I like when you're responding to customers on Twitter is Twitter video. So this is something that not a lot of people are playing with, but it's the ability that you can record a video and send it directly to that person that plays natively on Facebook. Um, and it adds a visual element and a personality to your brand to that person to make a connection. It's one of my favorite things uh, right now when we're playing on Twitter. So a couple of killer examples. Uh, Taco Bell has just been on fire when you're dealing with social. And this is the announcement from last week um, that the taco emoji is coming to all of our phones. <laughs> you laugh, but Taco Bell has been pushing to get a taco emoji since last September. So this for them is a huge win. Um, and I didn't put all of the uh, conversations that happened afterwards, but the ability for a brand to essentially dictate what's going to happen in the emoji universe is huge for Taco Bell. They have their own app that they've been using for a long time, um, playing around on Twitter, obviously, and they want their taco emoji. Um, what I like about this is, again, it shows them ending the campaign and is a celebration of what really they, they wanted to do. And Taco Bell is one that if you want to follow somebody on Twitter, they're a great one to follow. The other one that you should follow that has a local connection uh, is Starbucks, and more specifically, the real PSL, the real pumpkin spice latte. They decided that they wanted to uh, give a brand, give a drink its own brand. So they did that last year, 10,000 tweets over the time that the, the drink is available, and then the Twitter account goes dark, which I think is interesting. 22% year over year increase in sales of the drink. What, you know, much like if you go back and look at the Old Spice, uh, the Man Your Man Could Smell Life campaign, same sort of concept. So of the 10,000 tweets, I think 90% of them were talking at people as opposed to pushing out content. So, you know, hey, thanks, cool spring air, blah, 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 blah. All of these are at people, which is in pump, in, in important, or in pumpkin. Um, <laughs> uh, because it creates that brand awareness and that brand equity. And what's really fun about this, um, is it's got a Grand Rapids connection that not a lot of people know about. If you don't realize the amount of talent that's in this city, this will explain the amount of talent that's in this city. This account was co-created by the former social media guy over at Celebration Cinema, who now works for Starbucks. So if you're looking to do some recruitment in this room, I would start asking people questions because this is the sort of talent that comes out of this city. And this was a killer win on Twitter uh, obviously, it will turn back on in September when uh, Pumpkin Spice Latte re-arrives on the scene, although they might play around with Snapchat, which we'll talk about in a bit, or some other uh, platform. Instagram. This is uh, probably, if you're not on a platform, if you're deciding what platform to get on and you've got a photo-based currency of some sort, this is where I would go. Because this is, when we talk about an attention graph, where are all the customers, this is where they are right now. 300 million users, 70 million uploads a day. How do I know they're all there? Because of that number, 2.5 billion likes. So you may not have as many followers on Instagram as you do on Facebook and Twitter, but as I told you, that's an irrelevant number. Those people that are on yours are consuming all of your content, which is not happening on Facebook and not happening on Twitter. A couple of things that you need to do though when you're playing on Instagram that a lot of people get wrong and is vastly different than what you would do on Pinterest that I'll talk about in a second. One, you've got to be in the photo. That's what they want to see. They don't want to see just images of random things. They want to see you. This is from bands 
uh, works for a couple reasons. One, it's got the product in it, although subtly. And two, it's doing what all of us as marketers want to do. It's telling a story with no words. What's the story? Well, the story is, we're making some assumptions here, but that's the point of these photos, right? The assumption is, this is his child, and he wears bands, therefore he's a skater, and he's teaching his kid how to skate at age two in a photo that told that story, right? Taylor Swift. Um, and if you're not following Taylor Swift and you're in marketing, this is the one thing I will say about her. Uh, she is the only person on planet Earth that has gotten Apple to change their terms of service by herself. So I, I probably would pay attention to her. What she does really well is she's always in the photos. Um, and she makes sure that they're meaningful to her fans. And you can see here, 1.4 million likes. It, this is a photo of backstage in Raleigh where they put up a whole bunch of fan photos of her. So Taylor Swift does a great job. You want to be in the photo. Um, you want to edit your photos. I wouldn't just put stuff up. Play around with the filters. It's okay to play around with the filters. Don't, don't, don't try and force links. They don't work really well on Instagram right now. So putting links in the comments doesn't work on Instagram. It's a totally different platform. It's not really allowing you to get people off the platform to go do something else. So you want to tell a different story. You want to make a different feeling. The exciting news though is if you played with dark posts at all or any of the Facebook targeting, you will have that ability to target on Instagram by the end of the year, which is exciting when you're dealing with Instagram because so many people are consuming so much of your content. This is a great way to build brand equity. Snapchat. Um, this is a fairly young audience, so maybe a lot of this isn't applicable, but many, 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 many people are scared to death of this ghost. <laughs> scared to death of this ghost. But there are 100 million users using Snapchat right now, 60% of them under age 30, and when we talk about creating content, two thirds of them, two thirds of every single person on Snapchat does something on a daily basis. And so if you're one of those people that says, this is for kids, well, so is Facebook. If you're one of these people that says, uh, I don't get it. I would say go play in that space and figure it out. Become a practitioner because there's going to be a play here. You, if you've played around with Snapchat at all, uh, and if you haven't, these are two different things you can do on Snapchat. This is their, what they call their live feed. So this is what they had up for Father's Day. It was snaps from all across the world of dads celebrating Father's Day. It shows up midway down your Snapchat profile from all the people that you follow. Um, this is very similar to what Twitter wants to do with their spotlight function that they're going to roll out. So they're also going to highlight live events because one of the things that Twitter does really well is tragedy, which is sad, but they do breaking news very, very well. So they want to create something very similar to this so that on your newsfeed you'll see what's breaking in the world and can follow along with it. Um, and this is what every publisher on planet Earth wants to get onto. This is Snapchat Discover. This is actually a news content platform that they rolled out uh, mid, late, early this year, I would say. Um, and again, if you haven't played with it, all of these publishers, this just explains how to use it or what's going on in Snapchat, but all of these publishers change the content daily. Um, it's not really native, which I think is why a lot of people struggle with Snapchat. It doesn't work as easily to your mind as, let's say, Facebook or Twitter does because there's a lot of swiping up and swiping down. And if you use Tinder, you've got the left and right going. But up and down is kind of not really native to people. But these stories scroll up and down, and there's video in them. There's long-form content in them. It's it's. In my mind, it's what every publisher wants their news stories to look like, a multimedia sampling of what's going on in the news of the day. So if you are not playing with Snapchat, this is one that I would keep an eye on uh, because people are coming here, I mean, 100 million users, and if you want to talk to any millennials, this one, uh, and we won't spend much time talking about Yik Yak, in fact, this is all I'll say about Yik Yak, but things like Yik Yak, there's plays there if you want to talk to millennials. You've got to go where the customer is. You've got to market in the year that you're in, and things like these are things that you should pay attention to. Pinterest, 72.8 million users. 93% of them shopped online in the last six months. This was really interesting. One in three joining the platform are now men. When it first came out, it was 97% female. This is an e-commerce play. What's fascinating about it is last week, them adding the buy it button to the pins. So if you're in e-commerce, this is what you need to do. Because uh, one of the things that every single one of us and every single one of our customers wants is their time back. And so the ability to buy this thing without doing anything 
not only does it make it easier to sell things, but it makes it less cumbersome to actually sell things. Couple things if you're playing on Pinterest and you're trying to do the e-commerce play, which you should. If you put the price on it, the pins do 36% better than if you don't. Because I, I feel in this age of transparency, the customer thinks you're trying to build them if you won't tell them how much this tool costs. The other thing, unlike Instagram, remember Instagram, you need to be in the photo. Pinterest, you do not want to be in the photo. They actually do 23% less as far as engagement goes if you're in it with the stool. They just want to see the, the bench, the stool, the lamp, the, that's what they want to see. They don't really want to see you on Pinterest. So e-commerce, uh, again, this is a, a place that you should be playing in. And the buy it now button I think is gonna be really, really interesting as people start adapting that and buying things straight from Pinterest. Couple minutes on LinkedIn um, and then we'll sort of wrap here. 64 million users, 39 million of them are college or recent grads. So the things that LinkedIn does really, really well is recruitment. We are here at MLive, we can tell you that the recruitment play on LinkedIn is awesome. The one thing that most people do very, very wrong, and I get it every single day, is in the in-mail play. So if we rewind all the way to the back uh, to 25 minutes ago when we first started talking, uh, we talked about being authentic and with any engagement and paying attention to the customer. What's the number one thing, because I know that there's some salespeople in here, what's the number one thing that salespeople hate about their job? Cold calling. Cold calling, yes. That's what they hate, they hate cold calling. So don't do it here. Everyone in here who's been on LinkedIn has experienced this. You get a random email from a random human being and what's the very first thing that they want to do? They want to sell something to you. Join my group, come to my thing, buy my book, here's a free ebook, those sorts of things. Stop doing that here. This needs to be treated like an actual business relationship. This is a business to business play that you should take very seriously. Much like the noodles play, this is where I would be like, hey, Jamie, I noticed that you're in digital marketing. I'm in digital marketing too. Have you seen this killer article from Gary Vaynerchuk about what you should do with video in 2015? Thought I'd share it with you. And then peace out and build that relationship. Not, hey, Jamie, I saw that you're in digital marketing. Would you like to buy my agency? Because we do targeting and SEO. We would love to be a part of what MLive does because they're an awesome group. That's not what we do here on date one. Right? Anyone who's been on a date knows that that's not the play on date one. <laughs> that's what you do on Tinder, not on LinkedIn. <laughs> okay, so uh, I would say if you played with, the other cool thing about LinkedIn this year is the blogging platform. So again, if we're doing business to business play and you've got white papers or you've got infographics or you've got blog posts that you want to put up, a great play there. But slow it down. Once a week is fine. This is not moving as fast as Facebook is. So once a week is perfect to put blogs up there or white papers or infographics. So if you have a company that's pumping that stuff out, perfect there. Build some stars on your team that are putting those things out. And remember to just treat people on there like you would want to be treated. You don't want to be sold on the first instance where you meet a new person. None of us do. Neither do they. Uh, before we get to questions, I'll say a couple things. Um, one, you want to create more content than you curate. Number two, you want to be as transparent as possible. Number three, you don't have to be on all of these. That's not what today was about. I wanted to walk through a couple of things that you could do on each of these for strategies in the time that we have allotted because we don't have forever to play with this. You don't have to be on all of these. Pick one that you're awesome at and stay there. Go win there. Because if you do five of them terribly, you're doing no service to your brand at all. So pick the one that you want to do and stay there. And then branch out. And if you don't have somebody in your organization that can do it, go find somebody. Because there's plenty of people around here that can help you do that. Not even in this building, in this city. There are plenty of digital agencies that do that sort of thing. Find somebody that matches with what you want to do and hire them. Because this, like I said at the beginning of this, this is the modern web. And if you're not on the modern web and you're trying to sell anything, I think you're missing the boat. One last word before I take questions. I play uh, in a church band. And last week, uh, they handed out the run sheet for the week. And they had never done this before, but at the very top of it, it said, remember, every week is somebody's first Sunday in this church. And I thought, that's kind of brilliant. What took you so long, right? So I will leave you before you ask questions with this. Every status update, every tweet, 
Every photo, every LinkedIn post, every snap that you put out is somebody's first introduction to you or your brand. So don't half-ass it. Don't check the box on social. Do your homework and play. That's the other thing I would say. If you don't know what Snapchat is, download it, play with it. There's nothing wrong with playing with it. You want to know what's going on in the branding world. If we think about the 1920s and the 1930s, what would have happened to marketers if they just got scared of that talking, blowing box in people's living rooms and didn't put commercials on it, right? What would, what have, what would have happened if they got scared of paper? And they might very well have been scared of paper. It's a very scary medium, I know. Um, but we've all adapted, and now's the time that we need to adapt because the next five years are gonna be really important in this space as it morphs into whatever it's going to morph into. Facebook has been around a lot longer than most people anticipated because of their ability to adapt. And they're not going to stop adapting. So thank you. Any questions?